Welcome to LightUp Essentials. This is a series of video tutorials on using LightUp. In this video I want to focus on materials, uh, both from the point of view of editing them um, to change how they're processed by LightUp during rendering or lighting, and also editing materials for the real-time uh, elements of LightUp. So if I just grab the query tool and just go to this uh, material, this white material, and hold Apple or Alt and click. You'll see in the bottom corner, left corner, must assign a material. That's one of the most important things, I guess, is that uh, in LightUp you can edit any material. It will drill down through groups, uh, components, and allow you to edit uh, materials very, very simply, but um, it will not allow you to edit the default material in any way. So if you find you're clicking frantically on a, uh, a face and it's just not coming up with a dialogue, it's probably because you've got a default material on there. So if we just click on um, a material that is not a default material, we get uh, this dialogue. This has a whole range of different uh, uh, attributes that we can use on this left-hand side for controlling how it's processed. Always fully lit uh, is a attribute which says that that um, this piece of material this material doesn't need lighting it's it's essentially a self illuminating uh, material uses of that is for example creating fake uh, emitter uh, geometry or for example if you have a photo backdrop um, that is intrinsically a photo and therefore has lighting built in you don't want light up to be lighting the lighting um, so you, you're going to want to uh, check uh, always fully lit. Um, so, so a quick example. I mean, if I just create a little click on this, and I'm going gonna... I'm gonna to set that as always fully lit. So let's just get that out of the way. Um, what you've got here is this is fully bright, but you can notice it's not it's not an emitter. It's simply that uh, we've told it that to draw it without any lighting on it. This, however, that we we added uh, before is a area light, um, and it's uh, it is both self illuminating and it's always fully lit, but it's also it does put out light. Um, so all area emitters are, all, are implicitly always fully lit. If I edit this again, and I, this makes no difference because it's implicit, uh, but if I make that a, uh, an area light, it looks exactly the same, but now it is indeed putting out, uh, putting out light. Okay. So... The other uh, attributes that you can control are uh, don't cast shadows. So sometimes it's useful to create details um, in your model that you don't themselves want to cast shadows. They're there for a sort of visual effect. Um, you might, for example, uh, build a cage around a uh, point light source that you want visually to be seen, but you don't want it necessarily to, to cast shadows. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So you can check mark uh, materials to um, don't cast shadows. Low density and high density is about controlling uh, this value here. So this is how detailed lighting uh, is gonna be performed on your model. Generally, you choose something like this to um, a, a finer, a finer um, uh, value for, a smaller value for higher, higher quality renderings and a lower one for faster draft mode. But also, sometimes you have geometry which simply doesn't need a lot of detail. So a good example is a plinth that you may put your model on that adds context to your model, but doesn't really need to be lit at five centimeter intervals. So you may want to check box, uh, check this box saying low, low density. You don't have to, it's just simply a way of accelerating the, the, uh, the lighting. Additive glow is... Uh, a uh, feature of a material which is how it's uh, drawn. 
normally uh, all the all the textures and materials are combined together and blended together based on their their opacity. Additive glow uh, ignores that and makes it so that the um, the geometry is added in. It's commonly used for lighting effects, and I'll show an example of that in a moment. I'm not going to cover uh, Shadow Catcher. Um, I'll do that in a, another video. And Force Mask is, again, it's... Um, you can have opaque textures such as these. You can also have textures that have uh, an alpha component um, that uh, gives a masking. That masking may be smooth, as in the, the alpha component may be varying uh, opacity, or it may be simply just wholly transparent or wholly opaque. And, uh, and that's all. Often, so a good example is uh, tree foliage. You may actually want just to have, it's either transparent or it's not. Um, now the problem is, is that you often get textures which uh, look like they are um, wholly uh, masked, but actually when you look in detail, they're not. So this is a way of, without having to go and edit your textures and all that sort of stuff, you can just click this and uh, LightUp will do the right thing. So. I've actually got another model here. It's based on the same thing, but I've just added a few details so I can demonstrate some of these examples. So here, what I've done is to create a component. Uh, it's a face me component, and I've just placed it on the same origin as this point light source. So I'm just going to look at what I've set. I've set always fully lit, so it's not going to be it because I it, I want this to be. Um, always fully bright. I've said it, don't cast shadows. It's very close to this light source. I don't want this light source starting to cast shadows through this face me component. I want it just pass straight through. And also additive glow. And what that means, if you look at this texture, it's black on the corners, on the edges. That's going to mean that it's going to be adding black to uh, the, um, uh, the, the rendering. So adding black to a color doesn't change it at all. So it will be essentially transparent here and adding more and more uh, bright color as you get to the center. Okay, over here I've built a sort of cage out of a standard uh, SketchUp um, material and it looks like a, uh, a mask texture but in fact if you if you just look at this in detail and zoom in to the actual texture. You can see here, there's all sorts of little bits of you know, stray alpha all over the place. Um, so what I've done is to check mark force masked. I've told LightUp that while this does have smooth alpha, I'm not interested in that. I simply want either it's visible or it's transparent or it's not. The other element that's probably worth uh, mentioning uh, here is I've got this thing called use hidden lights. Uh, generally, if you hide a light source, then LightUp won't use it. Um, but you can also hide light sources uh, for whatever reason. And if you check this, it will use the light sources that uh, you've hidden. Um, you may, one thing to check is that when LightUp adds lights, it always adds them to this layer called LU lights. So if you find you've opened your model and all your lights have disappeared, check that you haven't just uh, by mistake or, or somehow uh, the LU lights layer has been made invisible. Okay, so we've got an alpha, uh, we've got an additive uh, lighting effect over here and we've got some masked textures over here. Let's just see what those look like. Okay, so you've got some really nice uh, shadowing coming out of uh, this mask texture here. If I come in real close here. Now you can see here, although it had alpha, stray alpha, it's a nice, clean, sharp edge that we've got because we've said it, that it's, we've told it that regardless of what the alpha says, this is a masked texture. Here, you can see this nice corona effect we've got around the light source. Um, and you can see that on the edge it's hardly an effect and it gets brighter and brighter and so it gives us a real sort of sense of where that light is. That light is, um, the actual dynamic light is, it's got a little animation on it. I can 
apply the same animation to uh, that additive. There we go. Okay, so what I want to get on to next is uh, the editing that you can do in uh, real time on the materials. So if I just um, double click on the floor, um, first thing to look at is these two colors. This is the basic base color that comes from the material, um, and it's uh, it's the sort of average color of, of um, that uh, that texture. There's also a Fresnel color that I've got here. That's sometimes called a sort of zero 90 degree uh, uh, color. So if I checkbox this and start uh, changing this, let's just set it to something we can easily see, um, something red, okay. So what's going on here? If I look, if I just, I'm going to pivot and look straight down, I get the regular color of the material. If I pivot around, as the, it becomes more and more glancing, you get more of this Fresnel color. And what that mean, what that allows you to do is to start uh, setting up some, some really nice uh, effects where you have a, a nice smooth transition from one, uh, one effect to another. Uh, here, if I, for example, set this down to something where you get something where, as you come lower, you get a, a darker and darker effect on, on the material. Okay, well, one thing you can do with, uh, one thing I should say is all the light up um, color inputs, if you've got an exact value you want to type, you can just start typing. So I want to put yellow in, just at 110, it's a normalized value. Uh, and you can see that you, uh, the glancing blow, we get yellow. The, the rate at which that happens is down to the um, IOR value you've got set. Um, okay, so let's just pull that down a little bit. Okay, so we've got bump maps that you can control. Uh, you can load a bump map uh, or a normal map um, if you've got one. If you don't, LightUp will generate one automatically for you from your base texture. Specular, again, it takes the luminance values of uh, the texture and generates you a specular map for you. You can, um, you can create your own. Um, so here we've got um, a little specular map and we load it. It's actually a um, checkerboard, as you can see. So now there are parts of this which are wholly um, non-specular and other parts which are uh, completely specular. And I can, I can control the rate of that also. Okay, so um, I can also have something where here, in this instance, if I use just specular, it means that regardless of the angle, uh, of a of, of view, I get uh, the same matter reflection. Fresnel reflections are based on angle, so right from above you get almost no reflection, and from increasingly glancing angles you get more and more of a reflection. Um, lastly, we've got this cutoff, which is simply it's, it's a visual effect as much as anything else. You sometimes just want the bright parts of your model to, to reflect. And this is simply a little filter that you can apply to, to cut off um, details that you don't want if you don't really want these brick kind of effects.